Hello, this is Lolly. Welcome back to my channel. I've recently been crafting with napkins and I had a question from a viewer about whether we could laminate on the napkins. And so I have my planner out to show you that I have just laminated this here as a dashboard for my planner here. I will give you the link down below to the planner layout and how I had done that for this year. And then I, besides, once I was working on the napkin, I decided what about tissue paper? So I started playing with tissue paper. And on both of them, I, for both of them, the napkin and the tissue paper, I also made bookmarks and played around with uh, self-adhesive laminating sheets. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I did these. Okay, so I want to use these. These are um, also some napkins that I got from Tuesday morning. It was $3.29 for them, called Turquoise Flowers Guest Napkins. And there's the company that makes it. So whether you use one, two, or three plies I, uh, is kind of up to you, but I decided to break it down into one ply because I wanted that translucent look as it is in my journal. I'm sorry for the glare. I have this heating up now, and it is ready. I used the Royal Sovereign one. I laid this out on my grid, which is why you don't see, um, it's why you're seeing all that turquoise through it. Let me put this under here now. I laid it out on my grid on my mat so I can sort of see if I've got it in there straight. And the way that I figured out what size was I just laid, I opened up my, one of my inserts and just laid it over there and cut around it. Now, if you want to cut your napkin, one ply napkin, on a paper trimmer, it's very difficult because it will just bunch it up. But if you took, like I have a lot of scrap papers from leftover from when I have made a lot of journal pages. And usually it's just printer paper. But I will show you on this. So just grab your scraps. Well, it's not going to work right, but I'll just go ahead and tear it instead of cutting it. Okay, this is also, this piece here is actually junk mail. So what I do is I figure out where I'm going to cut it and I sandwich that napkin between two pieces of junk paper like this and then I cut through and it will cut the napkin a lot more easily. Also, same thing with a craft blade. If you're using that in a ruler, even if your blade is sharp, it will just bunch the napkin up as you're cutting, but sandwiching it between the paper seems to help. Okay, so this is the area. It, this is, by the way, it's very staticky to put a napkin in here. This is the area with the fold. I'm going to put that in there. I have a little teeny strip left and I could have made a really narrow um, bookmark, but the bookmarks that I want are going to be a little wider than that. So what I think I can do is uh, whatever comes out of here, I can just use it as maybe some acetate or something in a, in a pocket. Now, I'm going to run it through the other way around, but I think that this has done an amazing job. And I can even see the, the pattern of the, um, the ceiling here for the napkin. So I pressed my napkin. I've done it both ways. I pressed it and then peeled the, the layers off, or I've peeled the layers off and then pressed it. Either way, I pressed the napkin before putting it in here to get it as smooth as possible. And then after this comes out, I'm going to trim as much of the laminate away from the napkin as possible. I do want to leave a tiny seal around it, but what you'll love about this is that normally if you're doing cardstock, there is a big air bubble all, all along the edge because the, um, the two sides of laminate can't really meet together well around a thick substance. This napkin is so thin that your laminate meets right up against the edge. It's beautiful. Now I'm going to make two um, of these because I'm doing one napkin and I'm going to do another dashboard out of tissue paper. I've already pre-cut them both and I also had to do the same thing with the tissue paper. I had to sandwich it in between two pieces of scrap paper in order to cut it. And then I am going to run some strips of tissue paper and napkin to make some bookmarks. Okay, so let's put that right there. It is beautiful. Oh, it's nice and crisp and thin. 
yes, I will trim this down. And then what I'm going to do is probably notch where the fold goes so that I can uh, get it into the elastics. So let me get another piece of laminate. Okay. So when I recently did my purchase at shopdisney.com, I it, my items were packaged in this beautiful tissue paper. So I thought I would take advantage of that and put that in here. It's a lot easier to slide this in than it was to slide the, um, the napkin in here because it's so staticky. I think I'm just going to let that go through once. I don't think I need to do it again. Another thing is that you don't have to do this just as a dashboard. Some of these napkins are large enough that if you fill as much as you can of this without cutting it down this much, you could just make a journal cover out of it. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Or an insert cover. So, okay, put that aside and get another piece of laminate. Another way to save from having too many scraps is to buy the, uh, the legal size of these and then you can um, fit more items on there. Okay, so I have more of the tissue paper and I'm putting that in here. I've cut these into bookmark size. And when I put in my next one, I want to make sure I leave a, a good gap in between where the laminate can seal. And I am using Scotch brand. I believe these are the 3 ml. Okay, and then I have napkin scraps as well that I want to use up. Oh, these are too long. I think I'm going to have to cut. Helps to work with the grid, which I'm not doing right now. There we go, that's better. And one more will fit in here. Alrighty, slide this over. Oops, make sure your napkins aren't curled. I like horizontal loading lamination machines. I used to have the Scotch brand and it loaded from the top. And the problem with that was when you have items like this that aren't staticky, they could slide around in there as it's feeding into the machine, and I didn't like that at all. I'm really happy with the translucency of this. You can see my hand shadow behind there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up here. I'm going to line it up actually this way, horizontally. I see I didn't cut really well. I'm just going to put my napkin to the right of this white line and my ruler to the left. That way I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Trim that off. I think what I'll do is put it this way to the left of the white line. Put this to the right, but I just have to kind of be careful that I'm getting, I'm going to use these dots here. I think I'm giving it one eighth of an inch border. You can score this if you want. I'm just going to eyeball it and kind of line it up so I know where to do it instead of using the scoreboard. And once I have that, I want to take a little hole punch and kind of get that area rounded there so the elastic can get around it. 
and you can round these little corners here if you want to. Okay, so now in my planner, I can put this dashboard around here and put it back in, but I think I'm going to have to move something around because I want this one here further back. There we go. Okay, so the laminate sticks out a little farther than my insert, and that's why I put the little hole notches in there so it would be balanced. And now, um, many people, you might say, if you're not familiar with the planner, what is a dashboard? And you can put post-it notes on there. You can put stickers on it. Another thing you could do is these pockets, which should be at Tuesday, uh, excuse me, at Target right now because it is the back-to-school time. And these are self-adhesive what do they call them? Just adhesive square label pockets. And you can see how that would fit right there. It's clear. It doesn't interfere with the design of my pocket. And now whatever I put in this pocket will be temporary. See, and I can put another one right here. They also have ones that are business card holder size. And I have ordered those on Amazon before. There we go. So now I have pockets. So you see what I mean here? There. Two pockets on there. Okay, let's work on the other dashboard. Well, I don't have to do that one right now. Let's just go ahead and cut these bookmarks out. Okay, so there is your translucent bookmarks. Again, let's put something purple under here. You can see through that. Isn't that pretty? I love it. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll do one of the Disney ones. Since we're going to Disney, this will be one for me and one for my daughter. And I want to see here. This is the one she needs because I can see Peter Pan really well on it. I will give you the links down below to the Cricut True Control Blade knife and to this ruler. This ruler is really handy. It was given to me at Creativation and I love it. I am always recommending this. You, if you have a if you have a hard time with three what's three eighths, <laughs> this will do it for you. You know this is so close. I think I could probably just get away with trimming it with scissors here. I don't really need the need the blade there there we go so there is a disney okay let's quickly do the disney dashboard and we will quit for now There we go, I've got two dashboards right there. Okay, I'm going to center this. I can see the lines through it. I'm going to use my crop -a dial eyelet setter. If you have lost your instructions, I will give you a link down below to my explanation on how to use the Big Bite, and it has a link on that of how to get your instructions. I get asked often where I get my eyelets from, and all over. That's all I can say. <laughs> I think I might like this lavender in here. Oh, it's pink. I have this set at A1. Beautiful. And now one for this. So that answered the question that I had received about whether or not we could laminate napkins. Um, 
Plus, I also use self-adhesive laminating sheets, and you can do that as well to make dashboards, to make whatever you want, pockets. Because you can see if you folded this up and secured the sides, you could make pockets wider, maybe. Um, but with the self-adhesive laminating sheet, you, you are limited because once it sticks, you can't readjust it. So if you lay your self-adhesive laminating sheet out, or I would lay the napkin out first. And, well, I'll just show you what I mean. I would iron the napkin, press it, lay it out, and cut this the size you want it. This is the self-adhesive laminating sheet. Kind of clean this up a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to peel this. Again, you only get one shot. You can't play around and adjust it. I'm going to shoot sort of for the middle because um, the ends are kind of curling out. So I'm going to take this and sort of bend it in the, in the middle here, lay it down, and then go sideways, and then smooth it out. And once you do that, you can cut around it. And you don't need to um, put self-adhesive laminating on the back as far as strength because this is strong. Um, but it would it's moisture sensitive. So you could do laminating on the back, laminating a sticky sheet or a Mod Podge or something in the back. But see, it does work. So thank you for watching. If you are a paper crafter and you were looking for other inspiration and other ideas, in addition to paper crafting, this might be the channel for you. Please consider subscribing. Thank you, and hit that bell notification to get notified whenever I have a new video.